tengo el gusto y el honor de presentar ante ustedes a Oren Simanian del Centro de Emprendimiento de la Universidad de Tel Aviv. Empresario e innovador, Oren Simanian es una de las personalidades clave en el desarrollo del ecosistema del emprendedor israelí. Es fundador de Startau, el Centro de Emprendimiento de la Universidad de Tel Aviv. El señor Simanian coordina las áreas de Marketing y Community Management en Indiegogo, Israel. Trabajando con emprendedores, creadores y generadores de comunidades web en Israel para que puedan llevar sus ideas al mundo a través de la plataforma Crowdfunding de Indiegogo. Es un mentor para las nuevas empresas que se encuentran en su fase inicial, además de ser una voz inspiradora sobre la innovación a nivel mundial. Oren Simanian es egresado de la Licenciatura en Contabilidad y Economía de la Universidad de Tel Aviv. That's it. Let's do a deal, okay? It will take us two minutes. It's very hard to talk to a big group that's spread like this. What do you say if you can move over here? Okay? Bueno? Vamos, adelante. Rápido, rápido, rápido. This is my Spanish. That's it. You're gonna, not going to hear more than that. I'll, I'll say it in Hebrew. Tavru lekan. Maer, maer. This is Hebrew. Yeah, we say yala. Though it sounds Arabic, it's Hebrew. Or not. This way you can actually engage with the people, get together, you know, maybe you do network. It's better sitting in front of mo mo Come, come, come. Come over here. The best places in the front line. Hey. Hey. Two places close to uh, Feren. Feher and Feher. This is the best way to do business in, uh, in Mexico. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you uh, for coming. It's a huge pleasure for me to be in Mexico, in Mexico City. I started this week um, in Puebla. Puebla, I'm saying it right. In Puebla, in the Pacific Alliance uh, gathering related to the entrepreneurial ecosystem for Chile, uh, Mexico, Peru, and Colombia. It was a great event as well, and very good startups that presented there. I will talk today about the entrepreneurial ecosystem. There is the slide, the presentation, but it's just because they asked to have a presentation. It's important for me, after a very short distance and several hours of flying, of flight from Israel, something like took me 24 hours, to share with you not only inspiration. Inspiration is good, but to share with you actual tools, okay? Because you can get inspired, which is wow, amazing. It's caliente, oh yeah? Uy, muy caliente. I'm getting naked. Can you put the music? Na, 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 na. Gracias, amigo. Okay, so I'm not getting naked. Don't get red. I'm not getting red. He's happy, wow. It's not going to come. So. I'm listening to the simultaneous translation to see if you understand my jokes. I see you get it. Okay. It's okay. So the idea is not only wow. The idea is actually to get tools. Okay. Seven years ago, I, studied, I started the entrepreneurial activity at Tel Aviv University. Actually, almost eight years ago. Imagine what's going on with the disco. Imagine eight years ago, no accelerators, no hubs. Total different atmosphere than we have today. Today, everybody knows what entrepreneurship, innovation, everything. It's all became innovative. Coca-Cola has an innovative drinks, okay? And I don't know if you uh, have uh, Springles, they will have an innovative food. Everything became innovative and entrepreneurial and so on. So what is all this? I'm sorry, I'm coming from the university, but I'm not going to be polite, correct? What is all this bullshit all about, okay? the entrepreneurial story. And actually, before we start, I want you to understand my background, that we can engage a little bit. So I started Startup, Tel Aviv University Entrepreneurship Center, eight years ago. Then I co-founded a media for the Israeli ecosystem that it's called Start Israel. Don't look for it, it's in Hebrew, okay? Learn Hebrew, and then look for it. 
But this is know-how. It's not wow. This is not inspiration. Tools, OK? And I'm also part of the Indiegogo team worldwide, supporting them. This is actually interesting because it allowed me to support my entrepreneurs, not only IT. How many entrepreneurs are sitting here that are doing only technology? How many entrepreneurs are sitting here doing other things? Art, music, film, social. You're doing the same. You're doing everything. You invest money in yourself. Good. But the most important thing to ask today, why are you here? Why are you going to spend your one hour? Actually, I, I left with only 31 minutes after all the children were playing here. Why are you here today? Did you ask yourself, or you just looked at the notebook and then say, OK, Oren Simanyan, he looks like a nice guy, Tel Aviv University, boom, I'll come to hear him. Why are you here? Ask yourself, because we have to have, as entrepreneur, call to action. Yeah? I'm meeting you today. And there are four steps, and this is the first takeaway you're going to take. You're going to have four steps in your life, in your business life, OK? In, in your entrepreneurial life. Welcome. Next time, don't be late. You know, you're a friend. You can't be late. It's very important to have those four steps. What are those four steps? What do you know about me? What do I want you to know about me? How do I show you that I understand in what I'm doing? Examples, numbers, and so on. And what's my call to action? What's your call to action? Can you close the door? Boom. Serada? Serada works? OK. So what's the call to action for you, and what's the call to action for me? I will leave my call to action to the end, but your call to action today is to pick several things along my left 50 minutes. Pick them. They are important. It's a mix of eight years of meeting thousands of entrepreneurs, investors, ecosystem builders. OK? Take some of it and adapt it to your own point of view. So you are here today because most of the entrepreneurs, this is the second thing you're going to learn. Most of the entrepreneurs, they don't know what they don't know. We know what we know. We know what we don't know. And most of the entrepreneurs, they don't know what they don't know. They can't, they can't actually expect the, accept the, expect the unexpected. It's impossible. Why? Because entrepreneurship is an experiment. It's not like doing business. It costs A, I sell it B, it's worth C, this is my revenue. It's an experiment. If we knew the results, it wasn't an experiment. So most of you don't know actually what you need to know in order to become entrepreneurs. This is why you're here today, because you don't know why you're here today. I will start with the background, the country I'm coming from. This is Israel. No? Who said no? Have you been to the desert? You can come with me to the military service every year, three, three weeks. We can spend time in the desert. Fabulous. But this was Israel. You're right. It's not Israel today. This is Israel 70 years ago. Desert. This is Israel 70 years ago. Swamps. So how come it's a startup nation? How come? Because we have the Holy Land. I'm kidding. That's not true. <laughs> you got a joke. Good. So, actually, this is Israel. And on top of that, you guys need to understand. Who is not from Mexico? Where are you from? Let me guess. Guatemala. Good. <laughs> I know her. It's a good one, huh? <laughs> you all need to know, coming from Mexico, what's unique in Mexico? What are the unique selling propositions, unique value proposition? Yeah, USP, UVP, you know them. On the laptop all day, you know all those abbreviations. What is EOD? Ah, till the end of the day, you'll check it. This is EOD, end of the day. You got it. So you need to understand what is this lab? the kitchen that you are going to cook your startup in, OK? What is unique in Mexico? 
What do you have that is good in Mexico? Industries, people, universities, culture. culture. We have amazing culture in Israel, which is called non-culture. Okay? Learn it. So, so you need to understand what is this kitchen. Rule number one. So those guys, 70 years ago, they were the first entrepreneurs in Israel. They came, but they had no option by becoming entrepreneurs. They had to build a country, which today is a total different story. Today, there are more than 350 R&D centers, not sales and marketing, R&D, Apple, Facebook, and so on, that are based in Israel. So I can choose a small of, most of my friends from Germany to go and work for a big corporate, earn six, seven, eight thousand euros, or I can choose to become entrepreneurs. Today, it's not easy to become entrepreneurs because you have an option. They didn't have an option. They had to build a country. They had to build agriculture, water, and so on. How come Israel is so strong in those areas? Because they had no option. So today, you need to understand that good is the enemy of excellent. While you're in a good situation, like most of my friends in Germany, it's in becoming also in Israel and developed countries that people can earn good salaries, which is comfort zone. Alan Yoni. Yoni, the ambassador, Jonathan Pellet. Embajada de Israel, the ambassador, I don't know, say, how do you say ambassador? ambassador. That's easy. <laughs> you change everything with the hand, that's it, huh? it works. So they were the early entrepreneurs, 70 years ago, and this is Israel today. 70 years. How come in only 70 years, such, so many milestones in such a short term? How many are familiar with Better Place? How many of you have heard about Better Place? One, two. How much money did they raise? How much money what? They, they raised, the entrepreneurs of the company. How much money they raised to build this company? Which one? Group? No, Better Place. You don't know them? Okay. Help me, the guys that more or less familiar with. How much money, Yoni? More or less? 200. Someone wants to raise? Jaime, help me. You can double in plus. Close to a billion dollars. How come you didn't hear about them? From Israel, the startup nation, a company that raised a billion dollars almost. Why? Because they failed. Okay? You are only going to hear about the stories that people did well and su succeeded. How many are familiar with Waze? Almost all of you. Why? Some of you have heard Yoni, uh, Uri yesterday. Maybe you heard their story. But this is a success story. This is why most of you know Waze. So, Actually, did they fail? Do you think they failed? Yes, they failed in building the company. But so many people that were part of Better Place are serial entrepreneurs with super successful startups like Waze. So this is a takeaway for you to understand that failing is part of the success. It's a milestone, yeah? And today the statistic says that in order to succeed, or a successful startup is a one among 140, more or less. And what is a successful startup? That's a total different discussion. But 140 means that you need to try 140 times to become... What's your name? Miguel. Miguel. I'm gonna... We're gonna have a little discussion in one, this one hour. Miguel. Mi hermano, Miguel. Okay, so you need to try, because if you try more, statistics, you try more, you fail more, most of the chances that you will learn. So I'm coming from Tel Aviv, and this is what's unique also in Tel Aviv University, that is based in Tel Aviv in the core business of entrepreneurs, investors, and those corporates. And of course, the connection with a very strong academia helps to create successful startups. 
How come Tel Aviv is the second best ecosystem in the world? And I'm not saying that. Some of you are familiar with TechCrunch? Who is not? Don't raise your hand. You're supposed to be familiar with TechCrunch, okay? It's like asking you how many are using LinkedIn? How many are using? How many not? Don't raise your hands, okay? Open LinkedIn, you have to do it. Second best ecosystem in the world. What does it mean? It means that there is the Silicon Valley, Tel Aviv, Los Angeles, and so on and so on and so on. This is the Startup Genome Report. Download it, read it. If you want to understand and if you want to improve yourself to get more education, Startup Genome Report, boom. So I'm coming with a, from a small country, 8 million people. The population in the world today is? The population in the world is? Almost 8 billion. What's the biggest challenge that we will have in 10, 20, 30 years? What's the biggest challenge? Help me. Worldwide challenge. Huh? To feed the world. Okay. Aqua. Okay. Hmm? And aging. Aging like, aging like dying. This is not a challenge. We want people to die, you know. It's a cycle. <laughs> You want to stay alone here? Energy. Energy. I think those were challenges. Read the book 2050. The population in the world in 2050 is going to be? Try to guess. Only 35 years from now. We are 8 billion. We are going to be? Miguel? 11. 10 billion. The biggest challenge, yes, food is a challenge, energy is a challenge, aging is not a challenge, but the biggest challenge is going to be what we are going to do with all those people. People are getting bored. You know what happens when people are getting bored. I don't need to explain. I come from Israel. Many people around us are bored. Okay? Unemployment. This is one of the biggest challenges today, unemployment, what people are going to do. And I'm saying that to show you guys that you need to take your own future in your own hands and to create. We have 8 million people among 8 billion people, same size as New Jersey, smaller than Belgium, and it's the second best ecosystem. Not because people are more smart, not because many other reasons, because people didn't have any other options, so they created. And why are we so successful? This is the reason. It's a true reason. Because of the camels. You have camels? Maybe in the zoo? Johnny, can we organize something between the countries to move some camels from the desert? Impossible, impossible. And of course, it's not about a camel, it's about the creative energy is once you don't have, you create on top of it. This is being creative. This is being entrepreneurs. To have a creative energy. Every day you come to the office, like Ferran, every day you come to the office, you have to see things differently. You can't be in a mood of being good. You can't. You have to every day challenge yourself. How do you do things like good entrepreneurs? Better, faster, cheaper. This is the key. What you need to do which will be better, faster, and cheaper. Okay? Entrepreneurship is not about making money. It's not only about being disruptive and innovative. It's about doing. It's about creating. But if you want to succeed, and not only to do and come very tired after many years that you tried is to do things in a smart way of better, faster, cheaper. You know what me too means? By definition of entrepreneurship is that you do the same in some other place. And you do the same in some other area. You take same models like 
crowdfunding and economy like Airbnb and many others, and you do the same in different areas. In better, faster end. Gracias, Miguel. Guys, don't leave him alone. Participate, okay? This is. But what are the key factors for a successful ecosystem? What are they? What are the three elements that exist here in Mexico and are actually fabulous? What are those three? Help me. One, government support. No. Government support. The second one, academia, research, talent. And the third one is the involvement of the private sector. If you have those three and they talk one to each other, you're in the right pathway. So you as entrepreneurs need to think the talent exists in the academia. So go over there, partner with them, offer them. Go to the tech transfer office that has research or supposed to have. Find the right talent. Push the government, like in Mexico, that supports entrepreneurship and created this amazing week and ask them to support, and don't be afraid. And of course, knock on the doors and ask for mentors, for money. But I'll tell you something. You don't need to ask for the money. Once you're good, the money comes and looks for you. You just need to speak the same language, okay? In Israel, six Israel Nobel Prize winner in the last 10 years, this is a good academia. If our former president, Shimon Peres, understand that Mark Zuckerberg is a good guy to be a friend of, it goes through all the funnel, and Israel is one of the highest, if not the highest spenders, on research and development per capita as part of the GDP, which is crazy. And the private sector. Intel invested in 64 startups. Actually, today is more than 70 eBay launched new R&D center in Israel. Not sales and marketing, R&D, pure R&D. Why eBay will come to Israel? Why? Because of you. Why they will come to Mexico? Because of you, because of the talent, because of the young entrepreneurs. Approximately eight years ago, eBay acquired a company called Shopping.com in Israel. Startup company, nice exit for the entrepreneurs. Then later on, they acquired a second company called Gift Project. Three guys, young, among my friends. And they said, wow, if we acquire two companies in such a small country, maybe there is a good talent there. Let's see what's going on around. And this is how it works. And Apple acquired two companies, and now they also launched an R&D center in Israel. This is a slide that I used on my TED talk, I think two years ago. They didn't have an R&D center two years ago, but once you see the methodology, they acquired two companies, they acquired two companies. It's funny to see it, but it works. You know what's the problem now? That people are going to work in Apple and are not unemployed and are not creating new startups. So everything has a pros and cons in life. But we want them to be in Israel, let's say the truth. Same like IBM, Google, Microsoft, and more than 350 companies. How do you knock on the doors? How do you meet those Apple, eBay, Intel guys? There is a language for negocios, for business, and there is a language for Emprendiamente? Don't give me a hard time, you know, I'm trying. Miguel, you are here to help me. Okay? It's a total different language. You have to understand. Businessmen, they think they understand entrepreneurship. That's not true. Okay? It's a total different process. They need to learn. Like angels or rich people that have money are coming, for example, from real estate. They need to understand how to become angels, investors. They need to understand and learn it. Otherwise, they're going to fail. They need to partner with an experienced investor that is going to be the lead investor, and they're going to be the followers. 
Otherwise, they're going to fail. And you need to speak this language to have the right deck. What is the de this deck that all the investors are looking for? Is to have the right presentation. And there are rules for everything. It's an innovative world, di world disruptive world, but less. And yes, it sounds funny, but as someone that is managing M&A for a company, and as someone that is in charge to acquire companies, I want to get the material, the same material from all the entrepreneurs. Why? Because I don't have the time to open emails and read your business plans. I want this one pager, una pagina, huh? good one. Miguel told me before we started. Una pagina, and this PPT that is going to be the right PPT. And what is the best PPT? PowerPoint. What is the best? When you have more slides, it means that it's very difficult to explain your product. So more slides, less valuation. OK? If my grandma can understand Miguel's startup, it's good. If she can't, you failed. If it's electro-optics, it's OK. She won't understand anyway. Guideline number three, you need to understand the ingredients. Academia, private sector, and what's the third? Government, which, on my point of view, I call them the gap. Government, academia, and private sector. The gap in between being a successful ecosystem and not. Don't steal it. It's my invention, the gap. Okay. Don't write books now and so on. So how do you build a successful ecosystem? You need money. What is the biggest challenge for entrepreneurs today? What's the main challenge? Financing. Help me. What's more? Confidence. Confident. Good. The right idea. What is the most important thing? Okay. Who is married? Who is divorced? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Who is married? You're married. What's your name? Luis. When you wanted to get married, and you thought to yourself, okay, my grandma is pressing, my mom is pressing, I need to get married, yeah? Everything around me are like pushing me. I want babies. Yeah? No. Okay, no. Huh? You loved her. So what is the most important thing when you build a team, your family? Is your wife. Is to choose the right partner. To choose the A team to work with. Not finance and not an idea and so on. Most of the ideas will start, if this is the X and Y, will start here and finish here. Most of them. The idea is good. It's important. The execution is the most important thing. And good execution is by good teams. And you don't need to find the one that is close to you, but you need to find the one that you feel that are the right partners to run for years. Because most of us are doing mistakes by saying, OK, I have 10 milestones in my building my startup. V, one, I did well. Second one, I did well. Third one, everything is good. V, V, V. I got to the last line, and I see that actually I failed. The company is not profitable. The product is shitty. There is a big competition from all over the world. I can't actually manage with my team. So you have to look 15, 10, 5, 3 years and see if you can drink beer with this guy for 3 years, with your wife for how many? 10 years. 10 years and you still drink beers together, yeah? You think so? Three of the leading Israeli companies, or technologies. Why am I showing them? Some of you can help me. Why? How come Israel became a leading company, a leading state in leading, with leading companies that create solutions for water needs, for irrigation? How come one of the leading companies worldwide is based in Israel? Because we don't have water. So there isn't good. If there isn't good, you create good things. You create excellent. Because you have to. You don't have any other option. So all the challenges of not having money, okay, 
and being isolated and so on. I was in Kazakhstan, in Almaty, something like eight months ago. And the entrepreneur said, yes, but we are isolated. We don't speak English, we, this and that, and we don't have access to capital and so on. I told him, yes, I'm from Israel. We, are, we don't have water. We are in the desert. We are on an ongoing process of trying to find the right for, a way to close this deal that is called peace with our neighbors. It's not an easy situation. And they, the guys in Kazakhstan, he said, yeah, you're right, you won. OK? So don't complain. Once you don't have, you create the best companies. If it's desert, you create energy. If you don't have water, you try to make water. If you are not drinking coffee with your neighbors, you have to create the best army tech units to defend yourself, and then it goes directly to the civil life. Some of you have heard about checkpoints. This is for you. This is one of the most important things. OK? Take it. Write it. Every day you wake up in the morning, remember that all the people like calling the, them problems, but those are challenges. In my life, I didn't show it, but I am also a football referee, arbitro, in the Premier Israeli League. And I will tell you a story. Two years ago, I was in the second league. And they gave me a match. The two leading teams in Israel. What are the two leading teams in Mexico? Nobody. You think so? No. America? You're a fan of America. Argentina. Who thinks America? <laughs> they told me that people don't like America in Mexico. So what is it, Chivas? Chivas. Shiva, like real Chivas? So what, what's like before the match, they like <laughs> having shots of Chivas and then? Is that how it works? OK. Let's take Shivas. It's easy for me. Shivas in America. Imagine yourself, second league referee, yeah, is going to the main stage in Channel 1, which is the first national channel in Israel, with all his team, which are international referees, UEFA, FIFA referees, with a lot of experience. I'm second league referee, and I got this match. And they told me it's Maccabi Haifa and Maccabi Tel Aviv. Imagine Shivas in America the alcoholist, and the, the guys that people don't like. And I said, OK. Most of my friends came to me and they said, Oren, don't go. Tell them that you are sick. Bro break a leg. Do something. You're going to fail. And I said, if I'm not going to take this risk and try to do my best, when do I get th this opportunity? So I'll try to be the best. I tried. And I pulled one red card, which was correct, but I didn't see a penalty kick. And I was wrong. But I tried. I failed and I learned. This way I became better. I think so. Case study. Interesting one from Tel Aviv University as well. How many use SanDisk, this product? How many use it? How many don't use it? It's impossible. You don't use it? You don't use? I'll give you mine. <laughs> Don't embarrass him, use it. How many didn't understand me? <laughs> Good. So this product was invented in Israel. Yeah. And this product actually exists in most of your cell phones, computers, whatever, the technology, of course. This guy is a serial entrepreneur in Israel called Dov Moran. He had an idea to create this product that is based on the technology. So he established a company called M Systems, partner with Tel Aviv University professor called Simon Litzin. And with his support and the technology, they created this product. Then then acquired by SanDisk for $1.6 billion. Impressed. You are impressed. It's a great story. And I came and asked Dov Moran, tell me, you sold your company $1.6 billion. And today, after he sold this company, he raised some money and also put his own money and created a company that wanted to compete companies like Apple and so on. So he created a cell phone that is called Moto, the smallest cell phone 
in the world. And guess what? He failed because you didn't hear about Moru. And then he established one more company, and guess what? He and then and guess what? He failed. So I came to him and I told him, "Are you are you local? Really? You are not a young guy. Take the money. Go to Ibiza. Go to Cancun. Have fun." And this, he said, this is the way he has, he's having fun, by creating new things. It's not only about getting to the last point of being a successful company to sell it. It's about having your own idea or your own initiative in promoting, doing something, even if you're going to fail and you're gonna, not going to whistle for this penalty. And this is the message for him. Fail, it's OK. It's OK. I paid a social price. Seven, eight years ago, I had the chance to choose my pathway and to become an accountant at EY, Ernst & Young, which is a leading accounting firm in Israel and specialized in tech industry. And I had to choose. And there was my father and my mother. And I don't know if you know the Jewish mother, but it's not easy with her. She wants you to become everything. And my friends, and it wasn't easy, but it came naturally. And I said that I have to do it. And Erma knows, my friend from the university, that once you try, most of the people around you at the beginning, they're not going to come and applause and will support you. They are going to criticize you, and they are going to check you. And you are going to pay this social price. And I failed. And Erma knows, I did a lot of mistakes along the way. True, Erman? Not a lot. No, five, six, no, no, yes. Yes, we do mistakes, and we will make mistakes, and we will pay this social price. And, but one day, we are going to sit, and there is a friend of mine that, today I told Ferran this story. She's a cl close friend of mine. They did an accident. Almost died. True story. And he was sitting in the car, And he felt like this is his last minute. And in those 30 seconds that he had, all his memories, along his life, came to him. But the only things that came to him are the things that he regrets. OK? So he needed this to change his life. We don't need accidents. OK? Don't regret. If you have this thing, change it. I found in statistic-wise, most of the people that are coming to my office and want to change their life are at the age of 40. Why? Because they had this back of having family, having one job, being in a corporate or somewhere else, and then they find out that they are missing something in their life and the clock is ticking. Though if you're going to find a solution for anti-aging, it's going to change. But it's not going to change so soon. So don't regret. Even if you're going to pay this social price, because actually it's not a social price. Why? Because failing is part of this milestone. Remember them? They were the first pioneers in Israel to build a country, economy, security, water solution, agriculture in the desert. And because of them, this is what we have in Israel today. They didn't have the option. We have the option. You have the option. It's easy today. But if you want to create, if you want to create an impact and you want to make a change, you have to do it. Numbers. In the last 10 years, not the last actually, but till 2012, there were more than 770 exits in Israel. What is an exit? A company, a tech company that is acquired by most of the time a big company. Most of them are corporates. This is the amount of the transactions, $42 billion. How many founders you need for 770 companies? How many founder, founders? How many? 1, Approximately 1,000 people created this. This is a huge impact on the economy. And it's not, not only impact. 
This is what motivates people today to stay in Israel. We fight 10 years ago on a brain drain where good talent left Israel for many developed countries that they wanted to promote themselves. Now people are coming back. Not only Jewish, not only people that are related to Israel, but people that want to take their startup one step ahead. People that want to get engaged with the leading ecosystem. But this impact is because of a small number of individuals. It's a small number. There is maybe one or two, beside Miguel in the crowd, that are going to have an exit in 10 years. If you are dating, marry with him. You are? I'm kidding. But, and there is a big but. 2011 and 12 alone, 15 billion. So it's, it was going, growing by the years, and then 2011 and 12, boom. Why? Because there is a worldwide trend of innovation and technology and entrepreneurship. And Israel going the startup nation brand. They gained this brain, we gained the brain. And what happens is people are coming and are looking for the talent. So you need to find the right brand for Mexico. That the big corporates are going to find you. You need to speak this language. The right PPT, the right una pagina, the right clip, the right connections. And this is 2000 and 2000, 2011 and 12. What happened in 2014? Throw a number. If this was in two years, 2015, uh, 14, I'm sorry, 15. And 13 actually doubled itself. How come? Because of the brand, because of the delivery. The big picture. We are coming from a small country, a big university in a small country. Big talent among many other people in the world. But we have to see the big picture. As we are sitting here today, 200 people, and I was in Puebla, there were 500 people. All over the world, people are talking about innovation, entrepreneurship, technology, and so on, and so on, and so on. But we have to see the big picture, is that people here need to consolidate and work together, government, academia, and private sector. Because there is a growing competition, and people are competing each other and are doing the same. Two months ago, the nice professor that just got in, which is my jefe, how do you say, you say jefe? My boss, he likes that I'm calling him boss, you know how it works, get promotions. But David said, Oren, you are doing X, I'm doing Y at the university, they are doing Z, let's do together. I said, you're right. I left my big ego aside and we are working together. And he's an A-team. So consolidation. Try to see what's going on around you, guys. Sometimes you'll find out that there are people around you that you're doing the same, so you can partner. You don't have to partner, but know what's going on around you. But when I say around you, not in Mexico. Not only in Mexico City, not only in Mexico. Not only in the Pacific Alliance and Latin America worldwide. Of course, HR, as I said, we had brain drain, now we have brain gain. And foreign investments. In order to attract them, if David raised his money for the current startup from leading companies worldwide, which are, do some name dropping. Samsung. David went to the big Samsung with an amazing deck he sold them a story, they bought it, he got the investment, this is how we created an amazing company. And this is one case study. But it's one case study among those 100 more or less co-founders that created 770 startups. So actually, how do you start after hours bullshitting for 30 minutes? What do you do tomorrow? What do you do? Who has a startup here? Come, Miguel. Come, come.
Miguel is in good shape. Good. Ah. Miguel, he's going to have 30 seconds to pitch his startup. You can do it Spanish, you can do it English. If you'll do it English, I'll be more happy, you know. But you can do it Spanish if you want, you know. I don't bother. I will hug him, not because I like him. I, I think there's. Ah, okay. Okay, bueno. I wanted to hug him, but okay. <laughs> Vamos. Okay, uh, I, uh, I have a dream, and my dream is to uh, try that all companies, the micro and the little companies, can compete with the big ones in a, in a uh, digital world. So my, ag my agency is a digital marketing agency, and we can do your, your little business or small business can compete with the big ones. So. Applause for Miguel. You. you can take it with you. Dismissed. So how do we start in Israel? This is how we start. We take people and we throw them to the water. He need to be prepared. Was he prepared? OK. One to 10? If he wants to raise money from Samsung? One to 10, maybe? Let's say make him a easy life. You can use 1.5 as well. David? Maybe two. This is Samsung. Comparing to the market, maybe it's seven, but you are competing a worldwide story. Yeah? So this is how we start at Tel Aviv University. This is how we start at Startup. We take talent. We take future entrepreneurs. We are not creating products. We are creating people, entrepreneurs, teams. We take Miguel. We put him on the stage. He pitch. He's doing amazing. He get experience. Now, 100 people know what you are doing. You got exposure. People are going to talk. Maybe you can work together. This is how it works, taking people, throwing them into the water. I can tell you many stories, business model canvas, and so on, and so on. But the most important thing is to start. Some tips. Act local, think global. It's not easy to take a flight from here to Israel. It took me only 24 hours. Yeah, but flight itself, it's 17 hours, which is not that you know, big story. You have to have tolerance to failure. You have to work clean. Think cheap, OK? Don't think expensive. Think cheap. Be lean and be flexible. What is it? What is it? This is my call to action for you. OK? <coughs> this is what you take. This is your call to action. Remember, you came here. I asked why. Because you all need to know your rank. What is your rank as entrepreneurs? It doesn't really matter which product and when you're going to launch it. You have to find your power, your impact, and try to feed this impact. What's that? Serial entrepreneurs. The three F. Can you speak louder? No, but it's a good one. I will add it. So we'll have the three F. Someone can Google it fast and I will be proud. Friends, family, and fools. Great. The world is a little bit changing in the last few years. So it's friends, family, and Facebook today. <laughs> and this is life. And you need to take this takeaway. You all need to build your rank, your media impact, people that around you that can support you, and a close family. As a young entrepreneur, when I started Startout, the Tel Aviv University Entrepreneurship Center, I didn't have a clue. I was motivated. I was inspired. But I was far from the market. So I took people around me. My brother used to work at EY as an accountant. I came over there and I met his partner. And then I got connections out of my family and friends. Even if it was a university initiative, I took my close friends, my close society to support me. This is what you're going to do. Try to understand your rank. And a little case study for you to check at home. Yoni. How many 
emails you have on your emails list in the email box? How many people you have been in contact in the last years? How many emails you'll find there? Few hundred. David? Few thousands. Miguel? Mi hermano? A hundred. I thought that I have 3,000, 4,000. And then Elena, which is the CEO at Starter today, she wanted to deliver a small event to my community. So she said, Oren, can I use your email inbox? I said, of course. And then she came to me red and very angry. She is a she came, she did Aliyah, which means she came to Israel from the former Soviet Union countries. So she, is, she is a communist. You don't want to deal with her. She came like this, like that. She said, Orion, you know how many emails you have? And I said, no, I don't know. 11,000. I said, wow, it's amazing. That's an amazing rank. I didn't know that. You need to know that. What's that? 50%. Which means that the beginning is more than 50% of the way. OK? Once you started, you are there. You don't, you don't really know when you have an idea when you're going to finish. So the idea, as we said, is important, but it's not the most important. Beta. The world is changing. YouTube is beta. You know what's beta? You develop your own startup. So there are phases for the development, alpha, beta, and so on. When I say so on, the world is changing. 10 years ago, you had a product, you finished, that's it, it's going to the market. Today, you're never going to finish. It's always going to be on a beta mode. And you all know or not that Google is beta, and YouTube is beta, and Facebook is beta. They're all platforms that we actually push and feed them. And they are always going to change. So you have to know that you need to be flexible. And this is a rank we got last year at Startup at Tel Aviv University at the Entrepreneurship Center as being one of the top 25 university incubators worldwide. Why? Because I was loco seven years ago. But I reached a level that I need to partner. I need to consolidate. I need to take it to the next level. I need to be flexible. OK? So I wish you all to be locos and to succeed with your initiative and to find me through this email. Please keep it lean, keep it short, like 10 words, not more than that. Clear call to action. And I'm saying that, and this is important. If the ambassador of Israel is sitting here, and the top professors from Israel, like David and many others that lecture today, and the Tel Aviv University president, and Chaim, which is leading the uh, Tel Aviv University branch here in Mexico, and Ferran and Erman, that are promoting the relation between Israel and Mexico through Tel Aviv University. If we are here today, it's not only that we want to share things. We want to learn, and we want to partner. It's important for us. Partnership is the most important thing. So this is a clear call to action for you. You have a great partner, and I, we know, and I know that we have a great partner here in Mexico. And I'm inspired in being here for the last four days, from Puebla and being in Mexico City, including the traffic. <laughs> so please, feel free. How do you say it? Su casa, mi casa? I say it right. OK, so invite me for dinner. Thank you very much. <laughs> Qué bueno. Questions? Vamos. Ah, sure. Yo hablo español, perfect. <laughs> She translated it. I got it. Good one. <laughs> Thank you, actually. Who is paying? I'm not paying. OK. Vamos.
Bueno, primero agradecerte la conferencia. Qué bien saber que la, los hermanos de Israel están aquí con nosotros a través de la embajada y apoyando a, a nuestro país. Yo haría dos eh, preguntas, si me permites. La primera, eh, el pueblo de Israel es muy inteligente de toda la vida. What's your name? Where are you from? Gerardo, Romo. Gerardo. Gerardo. La primera, el pueblo israelí es un pueblo notoriamente inteligente, culto y en las artes han destacado, en las ciencias, en las finanzas. Hombres, un pueblo milenario con una cultura que hay que aprenderles y da gusto recibirlos. Nuestro país estamos en crecimiento, somos fusión de pueblos, estamos, arranca, estamos en una fase mucho más eh, inicial. La pregunta en concreto es, ¿qué recomendarían ustedes para que el pueblo mexicano en 50 años tenga un nivel de inteligencia a título individual mayor? Y dos, en concreto, para el gap que tú creaste, muy interesante el concepto, la triple I'll answer this one and then we'll continue, because I'm getting old, you know. Okay. So first thing is it's easy. You said we are good at finance, we are good at uh, I don't know water, so whatever. We are good at A, B, and C. Each and every thing that we are good at is out of a challenge. We were good at finance out of many years ago that the Jewish communities were not able to create, to manufacture, so they had to trade. So once you are challenged, you create solution. There are amazing law firms based in New York that are run by Jewish community. Why? Because once they moved to the state, no one really wanted them to become part of the leading offices. So they had to create their own uh, out of a challenge. So everything is out of a challenge. Okay? You're not good at something just because of that. There is a challenge in the market. The young entrepreneurs, they said, the Israeli pioneers, they had a different challenge than, for example, what today David is doing and other entrepreneurs at Tel Aviv University. It's a technology challenge. We try to invent, we try to find solutions for, for things that we know how to. And how to learn from Israel to implement here. So first of all, there is a difference between each and every ecosystem. You can't do the same. But you can do me too, which means to learn from the Israeli case study, from the government incubators model, and from the university experience, from the tech transfer office at Tel Aviv University and the incubator in Tel Aviv University, and the structure that David and myself are leading at Tel Aviv University, that educate, that invest in startups, not only from Tel Aviv University, but all over Israel. We are leading entrepreneurship in Israel in our university. But here, you have to take it and adapt. It means that you are doing me too, as I said before, me too, with the local unique value propositions. Okay? This is how. And it's a startup nation, it's a brand, wow. It took many years. It's not that we started yesterday. Your first startup, David, was how many years ago? Eight? 18. And you always succeed, yeah? You raise money like this. I answered your question. Me too. Learn from the Israeli experience. We are here to share. And there is experience all over the world, in Finland, in Sweden. We are here because it's important for us to be here. We gave the, I gave my email because it's important for me. Que bueno. Muchas gracias. La segunda rap es nada más... ¿Qué instituto, así como nosotros tenemos, Espera. Eh, sí. así como nosotros tenemos el INADEM, que ha hecho un gran esfuerzo y por eso están aquí y los invito seguramente, obviamente, eh, ¿qué institución tienen ustedes de gobierno que es el ente vinculador okay. entre la ciencia y la industria, las cámaras empresariales, qué entidad gubernamental? Uh -huh. It's going to be a fast <laughs> answer. It's the OCS, the Office of the Chief Scientist. Of the Chief Scientist. You can email me, I will send you the link. Boom. Email me. You wrote my email? That's it. It's easy, you have everything. You can ask me questions all over the day. 
Bueno, eh, muchas gracias. Toda, toda, baba.